I'm Ali Wood from TV Traveller and I'm here in Murray Place in a new town in Edinburgh, the setting for the Julian Fellows drama Belgravia. So why are we in Scotland and not in a real Belgravia in London? The reason is a real Belgravia is um, very difficult to film in, there is lots of security, lots of embassies there, lots of traffic. So, um, so instead the director looked all over the country and this is where we came up with. You can see why looking around, it's very quiet enclave, it's very peaceful, manicured, um, lots of stunning Georgian houses all arranged around a, a circular gardens with private access. Belgravia itself is quite different to the rest of London because it's very uniform whereas a lot of the streets or in fact most of the streets in London are overlaid over an ancient road network so to have something that's so symmetrical and, and so beautiful is quite hard to find but you you get it here in Edinburgh in the new town. Uh, yes it was charming it was so interesting to see it all and my cat I hope he's featured in it because he was certainly trying to be the star of the show. <laughs> Very suspicious of the horses, but uh, ah. certainly thought he had star quality. <laughs> so you had horses and carriages parked outside your front That's house right. then? <laughs> yeah. And I was here for about two or three days, I suppose. Yeah. And the people in costume were sitting here just like you were. <laughs> and uh, it, it was magical, really, because you thought, yes, it must have looked just like that. Yeah. Behind me is Murray Gardens. And, um, it's a glorious spring morning, just beginning of March. The um, trees be behind me just beginning to blossom and you can hear the birds singing in the gardens. I'm quite excited to actually go and see what's behind this fence. It's, um, it's over my head height, so I can't even see the gardens yet, which I imagine gave them a real feeling of exclusivity back in Georgian times. So this is the entrance to the gardens and um, it looks like the garden is busy of earth this morning. I've just tried to get in and um, it's locked actually so I'm going to walk around the perimeter and see if I can get in um, it just might be these private gardens and I used to live in um, in Clifton in Bristol and it was also the same there would be these absolutely beautiful incredible gardens and you couldn't get into half of them because they were they belonged to the properties that surrounded them and um, I'm determined to get in I'm going to give it a go we used to live in here uh, top floor flat just over there so we had a key so the, the residents all have keys for the area. Ah, right. And uh, that's it. And what, do they, in it looks lovely. Yeah, did, do they have garden parties or some yeah, barbecues? Yeah, or... barbecues and things, probably some neighbourly bits. They didn't do that when we were here. Uh, when we lived here, there's lots of older people. There's more younger folk in Moray Place now. It's probably one of the most desirable streets in Edinburgh to live in, I think. Yeah. I think if you Google it, I think... The rules for Queen Street Gardens are no flesh, no swearing, and no something else. I, I, I can't remember off the top of my head. It makes me laugh anyway. <laughs> so, you know, you're not allowed to take your top off. So proper etiquette in these gardens, so, yeah, yeah, even, yeah, even yeah. still today. <laughs> Probably less so. <laughs> it's, it's a really peaceful place, really quiet. Even I've been chatting to some of the local residents this morning, I've seen a parking attendant, the gardeners are at work. I was desperate to take a look in those gardens and um, I, th I think I've found a resident who's going to show me around. And we yeah. never had our car uh, um, unloaded so quickly as they did. The, the film crew helped us get our stuff done because we were right in the middle of the filming. I'll get you a Christmas. It was in between Thank the two. You. <laughs> no, but I mean, we were on that particular day and uh, the thing I enjoyed most was the horses who seemed to be a crack team. And also the, the coaches and what have you, um, speaking to someone who obviously knew what they were talking about, the, the carriages and so on were props. In other words, they'd been specially made because of potential criticism that if you used a real one, it might not be precisely the right year or something. Ah. And because they were props, they weren't actually all that substantial. But they didn't, you know, you'd see these carriages and they didn't seem to care about them very much because they were just props. Yeah. <laughs> but, but quite extraordinary to watch. Uh, 
Um, and the other thing which was quite extraordinary was the sheer number of personnel. Yeah. Just extraordinary. How, how many would you say then outside your house? Um, 50 to 100, something like that. Wow. And in terms of actors, um, there were probably half a dozen principals, but they were all of the extras and the people walking up and down the streets, there were 30 or 40 of them. Wow. And because there's a lot of hanging around, um, you know, they would talk to you and tell you the most interesting thing. <laughs> the only thing, of course, is that this is Belgravia, not Murray Place. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, the producer actually showed me the sort of photo shop changes that they make. We did have, we did, they did do Vanity Fair 100 years ago, 20 years ago, yeah. 30 years. Uh, they did Vanity Fair there and they couldn't cut the grass for a long time because they didn't have lawnmowers at the time of Vanity Fair. Oh. And all the people who didn't know about this were complaining. Them. What's the goal? <laughs> oh my goodness, we <laughs> so have to cut the grass. Um, oh. But it was, we had quite a few things around here, haven't we? removed. I think what they actually did was to put grey Martian paint, but uh, they couldn't actually get it off, so all of the road markings were done again. <laughs> there was a particular scene that was filmed just outside here, um, which that shot I showed you was looking from there in this direction. Oh, I see. So, so the shot was here. From where the lady stand. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> I mean, obviously people with children and dogs and what have you will use it regularly. We don't have a dog anymore, um, but do come in occasionally. So, I mean, they are literally local gardens. They're used more in the summer. People have picnics and, you know, sit in the sun. Uh, there's a climbing frame, which is new. Very lovely. Uh, because the old one fell to bits, so kids want to climb that. There's a barbecue beyond that. Fixed barbecue, which is very popular in the summer. Um, I'm just trying to see where the Belgravia bench has gone. Most of these trees, the taller trees, are original from the mid-1830s. Um, and some of those have gone, and there are younger trees. Yeah. So. Uh, this is the sort of gardener's temple area. And I was just wondering if the bench was here, but it's not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and there are in fact four gardens. This one, Ainsley Place, Randolph Crescent, and the bank gardens behind. So what that means is that they're quite well funded. Yeah. And uh, they, you know, we employ two full-time gardeners. Oh. <laughs> And I mean, the particular thing I like is the early summer when everything's in flower and it looks magnificent. Yeah. <laughs> to the extent that it used to be said that um, from a certain window you could see the residences of no less than seven law lords. Um, <laughs> And I think it's become a lot more diverse and there are more children and what have you since that particular time. The other change that's happened is that the commercial premises have largely changed over to residential. So number 14, for example, uh, for years was a huge private doctor's surgery. It's now residential and there were other um, medical practices and so on. Um, and the other 
change is that there is a move back to whole houses. So if you take number two, for example, um, that is now in a single ownership. Yeah. Um, whereas, I suppose, from the in the first part of the 20th century, most of these whole houses were subdivided into flats. There's a trend in the opposite direction. <laughs> so she, Tamsin Greek, pulled up here in a carriage. Pulled and up in then... a carriage, yes. Uh, they did the take about six times. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're watching it then from... <laughs> From your house. Well, I have no idea what the problem was each time. <laughs> <laughs> it looked good to you, did it, the first time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's been done in the last couple of years. Where will that stone have come from? Is it locally sourced Well, stone? it's not. Th this was originally Craigleith stone from the Craigleith quarry, which right. no longer acts. It's got a supermarket on it now. Oh. So there are various similar sandstones. I don't know where these came, but it could well be from the north of England. Yeah, I understand. It, it might be they appear whiter on screen because the Belgravia in London yeah. is white. Well, well that's right. <laughs> so well, they're they're going to sort all of that out, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Good old CGI. I mean, you can't actually get out of either Forest Street or into any other place. Yeah. So it doesn't have any through traffic nowadays. I yeah. think that is basically wrong because I think that uh, cities should be sort of osmotic and that by not allowing access you create eight other bottlenecks elsewhere. So although this is very privileged and it's great but it's not the way it should be. Yeah. <laughs>